I don't ever want to be on Facebook or watching the news and seeing that yet another person took their life and that I couldn't do anything about it. At the end of last summer, 2019, I was on Facebook and I came across the listing for a missing firefighter. It was local Virginia firefighter and he'd been missing for a couple of days. Nobody knew where he was. Nobody knew what was going on. And the first thing I did was I went through and I made sure that it wasn't one of our clients. I made sure that it wasn't somebody who I had had contact with. And then when they found him, he was dead. He had killed himself. And all I could think was that he hadn't been able to get help that when he needed somebody to talk to or somebody to step into his life and give him that outstretched hand saying, I can be here for you, he didn't have that. And so when I think about why I do what I do and why I spend a ridiculous amount of time at Checkpoint One and worrying about our clients and continuing to reach out even when I'm exhausted, I think about that guy who didn't get what he needed and he didn't make it. He lost his fight with depression. And then I think about this one client I had who had a really, really bad night and I got a call at 10 o'clock at night and he was missing. But his friends found him and he, he made it and he continued with us for a long time until he was able to say, look, I'm, I'm ready to be done. I'm ready to move forward. It's the people that did get help and the people who come to us and then tell us when they're ready to be done. That's what makes it so much easier to keep sitting with all of the pain I hear every day. It's the difference between their story continues and their story ends. And that's why I want to keep doing this. And that's why I work with the peer support team members who call me at all hours, continuing to work for checkpoint one knowing that we don't have the funding we need knowing that there should be three of me maybe ten of me and i want to be part of the continuation